Hello everyone, this is Alex, and today we are doing some orchestration. Now it's not going to be a full piece, it's only going to be a small excerpt that I prepared for this video. And I'm totally doing this from scratch, so I'm not sure how long it's going to take, because it's going to be a big orchestra, but I'm going to do it. So let's get to it. So here's the piece, we're going to listen to it first, uh, just so we can have an idea. Here it is. So beautiful, very sensible, uh, very emotionally complex um, moment of music. Uh, you start with something maybe lighter and something maybe hopeful with these two major chords. Um, and you go into more complex emotions here with the F major 7th and D minor. Uh, and we end with three minor chords which kind of bring kind of a sad ending. I actually created this um, this excerpt with a movie scene in mind. Uh, it's kind of a film, film music to accompany this scene. So just so you know, the scene was about two people reuniting after um, experiencing uh, some very traumatic event. Um, so the, the idea of, the, of that scene is that uh, the two people were happy to see each other, but there was also this feeling of a, of, of, of a shared burden and something that uh, they will have to carry and they will share for the rest of their lives. So the idea with that uh, with that scene and why I picked this, that this idea of a scene uh, was to be able to create an emotionally complex music. And this is super important to consider even if you're if the composition is done, I'm doing some orchestration now, but um, I have to know what was the intention of the of the composition at first. Otherwise, my orchestral approach might be wrong. I might use too many instruments. Uh, some crescendos might be too 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 big. Um, and if I want to recreate these emotions uh, the right way. I need to know the context in which the piano piece was written. So now I don't know if you've seen my video of five steps to orchestrate a piano piece, but I will go on over these five steps and I will give some uh, some of my insight as well. But before we go into the five steps, let's have a little bit more information on uh, the piece itself. We start with the B flat chord and with the information we have here, we might think maybe, oh yeah, we're in Lydian. But as the piece goes and uh, as the last cadence occurs, we kind of unsure about that because we end on an A minor. And um, this kind of tends us to believe that we might be in Phrygian more than in Lydian. Um, now that's not so important. Uh, it's just a way for us to see that here, there's not such a very clear uh, mode, and uh, there's not so much polarity towards a certain note or a certain mode. The cadence here uh, even feel like it's open. Um, there's not like a closure or anything. So this might be useful information uh, while we orchestrate. Something else to see is that uh, the phrase is in, uh, the musical melody is in three phrases. Uh, we have this beginning phrase which goes up and down. Uh, we have this second one which, which is shorter but much more emotional with the, with the, the skips. Um, and then the ending which brings closure. Uh, so knowing this form uh, can help us understand uh, the, the music and can help guide us through our choices. And also a few words about the melodic writing. Um, we have important notes here. B, D, F, E, J, and C. So that the first and the last note of every small phrase. Um, notice that they are all different. Um, so I composed this so, so that the, there's no such repetition and um, 
the it's uh, it's kind of always moving into some some other uh, colors, bringing some other colors to the to the listener. And as the uh, accompanying chords, well, we have um, simpler chords at the beginning here, uh, but the melody here touch uh, ninths, which uh, which is an added ninth because we don't have the the, the seventh uh, in the in the chord here. It's not presented, uh, so it feel so this feels like um, you know something that's unresolved of again. Um, because at the same time it goes up here and goes somewhere else, so it's there's no resolve after the, after it's presented. After that, uh, F seven uh, followed by the D minor with the added ninths again. So we kind of reuse that uh, represent that color here, but with a minor chord. Um, and then the G minor, just a simple G minor here, is very effective. Uh, after after we we heard all of these di different complex chords, it's the first minor chord we hear here, um, and this kind of brings us to a more formal cadence uh, uh, with the D minor seven here and finishing with a A minor. We can see the different registers as well. Uh, so it starts in the kind of mid. Um, low mid register and gets uh, into the the lower register here for the for the last uh, for the last part. Uh, so this gives us in, maybe an information on which instruments might be good to to play this. Uh, maybe uh, we can add uh, some different instruments on the on the second phrase here because we have such a uh, different uh, register. We have uh, like a fifth below here. So it, uh, this, when I see this, it's already, oh, well, I am I know that I'm going to add in some double bass here or I'm going to add in some trombones here. Um, I'm going to add in some, some lower instruments here uh, and I will avoid presenting them in the first phrase like here. So already we haven't started, but it's I'm already like uh, thinking about the decisions that uh, I will be making. Um, but so let's take a um, step back and try and think about our five steps. So just to refresh your mind, the five steps are to isolate the different voice lines, to highlight every dynamics, uh, to determine what is foreground, middle ground and background, to setting the main orchestra groups and who supports them. And finally, uh, to expand or adapt the musical ideas. So that's the whole five steps to the, the whole process. The first three ones are more uh, in the preparation phase and the fourth and fifth uh, steps are more about doing the orchestration itself. So let's do our preparation here. So the first step uh, to isolate the different voice line, I already actually started this earlier. We have mostly an accompanying melody. So it's kind of obvious to say, well, we have the 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 voice line up here and then another voice line here um it's like kind of a multiple voice line in the the, the second uh, group here uh, just because it's an accompaniment um but it's now useful to say to see well how many do i have so i have two voices in this one and here i have three um, but it doesn't mean that these two chords are not uh, related they are actually in the same phrase. So I have to balance them. Uh, this one has two notes and this one has three notes. It doesn't mean that like I'm gonna have like, uh, I don't know, like two horns and then here I'm gonna add, uh, you know, a trombone to, to, to do the third note. Um, I have to have the, the three instruments here maybe and then they split up here um, or if it's not three, maybe uh, like uh, an even set of instruments. Um, a solution to that might be to add uh, a note here, because uh, when you orchestrate, um, you you can have you can do this actually. You can fill up the holes. Some things that might sound good on the piano might not sound good in the orchestra. So you kind of have this option if you uh, if you feel that you need it. Afterwards, we have only three note chords until the end here. Uh, so, so I'm I'm kind of uh, so this part is might be a little bit easier to do. Um, 
But here we have, uh, we only have like the D and the F. So uh, maybe we could consider adding in uh, a note here, uh, like the A, to fill fill again the the, the gap here. Um, but uh, this might sound a little bit too dark uh, in the lower register, um, even with the orchestra, even if we give all these to maybe a string, uh, strings ensemble. Um, so we're gonna have to think about it. So now that we uh, isolated the different voice line, we can do step two, which is highlight every dynamic. So there's not so much to do here. Uh, there's a dynamic here, dynamic here, dynamic here, dynamic here, dynamic here, dynamic here. So crescendos and diminuendos are dynamic markings. Um, if you'd had accents would be also a dynamic marking. We don't have any accents here. Uh, we don't have any um, indication of pedal. We don't have any pedal markings. Um, but I kind of, uh, but we do have uh, uh, some some lines here, some uh, legato lines. Uh, so this indicates us that maybe uh, there's gonna be a pedal uh, like here and another one here like this. And uh, we're gonna have the same here then again here. So even though you don't necessarily have the, the pedal markings um, in your piece or in the other piece you're orchestrating, um, you kind of have to figure out where they are or where the, the performer will play them um, because this gives us information about how much resonance uh, we're gonna need for this, this little phrase here. Um, it's not the same when you actually don't have any pedal and you only have like short notes, uh, then you're gonna do, then you're gonna approach the orchestra very differently. You're gonna do maybe a much lighter uh, type of orchestration. Um, but in like here, we need maybe something more, um, something more resonant. Um, so we can, we'll kind of have to make different choices. So back to the dynamics, we uh, we start with in mezzo forte. Um, we go into forte, into uh, uh, diminuendo to mezzo forte. Um, actually, <laughs> actually, I I put this here the the diminuendo to mezzo forte. It's kind of natural uh, on the piano, uh, but I was just thinking of uh, like when when I'm gonna write that for the strings, uh, there's gonna be a diminuendo to mezzo forte necessarily. Uh, but actually like the normal piano score, there would not be anything here actually. And then this last phrase is gonna lead to uh, diminuendo to piano. Um, and I've kind of already, like if I would perform this, I would not like do this forte. I would maybe uh, do this mezzo forte and then uh, and then lower down, um, you know, just to keep the forte uh, for the for the second phrase here, uh, so we get the full effect. And then just use uh, mezzo forte towards the end here. Um, so sometimes uh, all your dynamics, all the dynamics, won't be written in the piano score. So maybe you can you can add some to make sure that you have a plan. Uh, when you're thinking about the, the dynamics. So this is step two. So we're already going forward. Step three is determine what is foreground, middle ground, and background. So obviously the melody here it will be foreground and, uh, and the accompaniment will be more middle ground, background. Um, we could say that the bass line would be more middle ground and the um, the and then the intermediate lines here will be uh, more background because they're um, they're only supporting the melody and the bass. Melody and the bass are usually the most important, uh, the most important notes, and the, the most important lines. So you have to uh, support them. And uh, yeah, so I guess that's it for step three. Step four: setting the main orchestra groups and who supports them. So this is where we start to make orchestral decision. Um, I can say already that uh, this melody line, uh, well, it's very much in the mid register. I kind of hear like a horn. Um, I could see 
a cello. I like to write like all the instruments I I, I imagine. Um, cello because it's uh, in the hopper register. It's very warm and it's very uh, lyrical for the for the instruments, uh, for this instrument. Um, we could say violin. Uh, the violins, it's the opposite. It's uh, in the lower register, so it, it's also quite warm. This uh, this this low string from the from the violin. Um, other than that, uh, maybe clarinet, but um, maybe clarinet could could double. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, already we have these, and the register is not so high. It's it's not so 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 big. Um, so it's not like we might have some problem only using one instrument. I kind of think we can use one instrument for the whole melody. Um, so it can be either of these. Like we could also think about like trombone, but um, trombone may be a little bit intense for this. Um, a horn is much warmer. Um, I'm, you know, I really think this melody cannot be like you know overwhelming. It, it needs to be warm. It needs to be um, kind of controlled. Um, so it cannot be into uh, too much extreme sounds. And that's why the horn I feel it's good. The cello might be good as well. Like the strings obviously are good for this. Uh, the violins and the clarinet might be okay. Um, but uh, we might do something else with the clarinet. So that's for this. Um, we might also uh, think about giving some octaves to the melody. Um, maybe not some big octave, but like maybe just um, a doubling for with the with the violins uh, in DVZ or something something soft, um, not something too extreme. Like I don't I don't want to add too much uh, emphasis on the higher um, the higher part of the melody, um, but uh, this might be. An option for us so I'll just keep that in mind and as for the for this here well we have if our cello would be busy here um, I could hear like we can play this line here F E uh, or F G on the viola um, we can play this on again the clarinet um, we can play this on the bassoons uh, we can play this on the horns. We can play this on the trombones. Trombones. Oh, you are, I'm not sure how I read this. Trombones. But yeah, this is where I see that uh, that uh, this is uh, the music will be very very in the in the lower register for maybe the string orchestra. So the string orchestra will be busy with more with the melody, the upper string orchestra, I'm, I'm thinking of the, the violins. And um, maybe here more of the, of the viola and cello and double bass. Um, and yeah, I, actually the double bass, I will only see it uh, come in in the second phrase here. So I will do this double bass, double bass, everything in French, um, until the end. So double bass will be there until the end. Uh, I could see also here like plus uh, tuba um, to, to, to help down here. Um, if the bassoons aren't here already, uh, I would add in the bassoons, uh, maybe maybe like contrabassoon. Um, no, I think this is, this is a, like a pretty straightforward plan. Um, where I'm not talking yet about percussions or a harp or like other elements like this. I'm mostly when I'm doing this thinking of um, like string woodwinds and brasses, the bigger sections. And yeah, just the fact that uh, here I add in notes, it's also important because um, it goes with the dynamics. Um, I always say to orchestrate dynamics. So this means uh, I'm going to start with a like a smaller ensemble here for the first phrase. And here I'm going to add in maybe the whole orchestra. The whole orchestra is going to be on this th these two chords. And here I'm going to pull some back, pull some away. So uh, maybe like if there was a contrabassoon here, I would take it off. If there was like full trombones, uh, I'm going to write here like plus trombones. Uh, if there were some trombones here, I might 
uh, like take off some trombones, uh, minus tuba, minus contrabassoon. But yeah, no, maybe the tuba actually, I could leave it here. Uh, the tuba is actually actually goes well with the horns. Um, it can support uh, like very soft sound as well uh, in the orchestra. Uh, so I kind of like to, to have it uh, here uh, for the ending. But otherwise I would leave the, um, the strings for the end. Uh, I would keep the, the woodwinds as well. Um, maybe the woodwinds can complement, uh, not necessarily play this line here, uh, but maybe complement with, um, you know, uh, another rhythmic figure that we, that we will add. We will get into into adding more and um, in, in just a moment. So now that our plan is made here, uh, we can actually try and put this, start in putting this idea in the score. So I will do that now. <laughs> okay, so I created a score for the, the whole orchestra. Uh, I, I'm just using like the biggest orchestra ever possible. Um, so we have a piccolo, flutes, uh, oboe, English horn, uh, clarinet, one and two, bass clarinet, bassoons, counter bassoons, four horns, three trumpets, three trombones, two bub, timpani, three percussions, harp, uh, and then the two, two sets of violins, uh, violas, cellos, double bass, and uh, all of these, I'm already separating the, the, the staves, um, just, just if I ever need uh, to create some DVZs. So let's start uh, writing the melody, uh, the melody ID, the melodic idea first. I'm actually gonna start with the cello. I, can, I kind of feel confident adding in uh, cello into this. I'm gonna add in the different dynamics. Uh, we were starting with uh, mezzo forte here um, and then we had maybe I was thinking about the diminuendo here already uh, maybe to piano and then back uh, or maybe just a mezzo forte here and then back to forte something like this um, and then I want uh, maybe it could be good um, to have some support over uh, this line. So I might just add this to the, um, the violins. Just like that, I copy the same line, uh, this seems good. And um, yeah, I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna octaviate the line, uh, but uh, I'm gonna do that first. Um, I will bring that line as well uh, to the horn, maybe like the first horn. So I'm just gonna copy this, uh, maybe just the first one. Um, and maybe here for the for the the loud part, uh, the second phrase, I'm gonna say a due. So. I'm asking basically the two horns to play on, on this part here and they can finish together here. While I'm here, I might just um, think about the other, uh, the other horns um, and just add them already. Yeah, we, we actually had this, but uh, since we have the, the E up here, I'm just gonna put um, the, the 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 C and the G, so we have the, the full chord here. Like this. I'm already gonna put the... Um... And actually I'd like to do kind of a crescendo on the first, on the first, um, the first line here. Now notice I'm not listening to anything just yet. It's easy to just listen to the playback and really, and like, freak out because it just sounds awful um i wouldn't do that i will i would try if i were you to just stick to what you know uh and try and try and make decisions based on like the qualities of the instruments and just just what you know about these the instruments how they sound good and what register um from the repertoire that, that you know uh, from your experience as a musician um Especially with orchestration, uh, maybe like composing, it might be useful to have the piano 
close 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 to you but just for orchestration the music is already is already good right you just have to make it uh, fit uh, in, in the right way and and highlight uh, the different interesting things uh, with the orchestra so you don't necessarily have to have the playback and to know uh, know what what uh, how things sounds all the time actually it just uh, it just makes uh, things longer i think and what are the notes after that? The, say, the chord here, fa do mi, fa do mi. So I kind of uh, uh, da, da, da. No, these are a little bit low for the. I now want the E here. Maybe uh, and the the F. I know there's an F here. Yeah, mi fa. This can be like uh, with the uh, with the um, with the horn. Uh, actually, I might uh, add in this. And um, maybe we could like, um, what's the other note up here? This is D minor, so I might add, add in like a, a doubling of the A here. Um, so we got three horns on the, this A here, so really emphasize it um, but uh, and kind of keep it for the the chord here because this chord is this part of uh, D minor um, so we have we have uh, an A in this chord as well um, and for the ending we have like uh, G F E can be played by one of these horns Like this, and maybe the other one can play the the B flat here. Can we play the A here and the A like this? Because we have uh, yeah, it's D minor to A minor, so we can as well have the the A played two times. Uh, this just completes the chord, and it creates such a nice line as well. Thirds moving downwards like this into the the fourth. And we kind of assume that uh, somebody else is going to do the low A down here. Um, so, yeah, we don't have to, to do it here. Uh, we can, maybe we can assume that the tuba is going to do it. We can already uh, put it down here. Naturally, the tuba, we can already say, yeah, where we got these, uh, these line here. Uh, we can just take them and put them here um, and this is going to be mezzo forte so yeah actually our tuba is kind of our fifth horn I like to see him like that like this uh, use it like this um, especially in these kind of situations uh, so we can have, we can go backward like an F D here we can use these as well F D use this it kind of complete the, the the chords with the with the horns, and then um, then we can think about trombones and uh, and trumpets um, afterwards. And notice as well that like I'm thinking about all the instruments, um, so I'm putting more first. But uh, we'll see at the end of the video. I might just pull back afterwards and say, well, maybe we don't need this line. We don't need this line. Um, it's easy to just add in and add, add in stuff um, but uh, the real decisions the, the real decision making is when you take stuff out and say well this isn't necessary to uh, to ex express uh, what, what I want to express with this music so now we, we've gone to the horns um, so you see I've, I've gone through the the melody um, back to the, the accompaniment uh, just so I can finish my horn section and it gave me some idea on how to write for the tuba so I'm kind of doing this like backwards and and uh, going from one section to another I haven't finished my strings yet um, so this is something I like to do and then I come back to the strings and then I, I think about 
uh, what I could do, and then I go back to the to the horns and to the brasses and make some of the decisions. So yeah, let's think about the double bass then, because we just did the tuba. Um, I'm pretty sure like these notes can be played by the, the double bass down here. Um, like it can be played harco, and actually the um, like this here, the D and the C, uh, they could be played the pizzicato. So that's it for our double bass. We don't need much much else. Um, we can think of our we can think of our um, of our uh, cello here. Um, what should we do? We have just this, which is sufficient. Actually, yes, it needs to be here. Something like this. Yeah, this, this makes sense. And then these, um, I can double the bass here. Um, and actually the double bass is sounds an active lower. Um, so don't mistake, mistake this for, uh, for the double bass being higher. Uh, these are actually the same, same pitch. Um, but yeah, just because there is the double bass, it's it sounds an octave lower, so it's written an octave higher actually. And notice, like I could do something like people would would do this like straight up, and say, well, I'm, I want some deep octaves and uh, like some super low double basses. Well, you don't necessarily always have to do that. Um, Actually, I kind of like having the cellos and the double bass written at the same pitch, uh, sounding at the same pitch. It just really reinforces the cellos, and it um, like uh, double bass too low uh, creates a lot of harmonics and a lot of rumble. And you don't always need this this rumble. You need it a lot of times, but like maybe here i just wanted some more clarity and um and also since we're going from like a section in pits pizzicato to the section in in arco um it's not like I, I didn't want to create too much of a gap between those those two phrases um like adding like some super big low double bass here wouldn't, wouldn't make sense to me well, now our double bass are fine, and we added in some cellos. Um, so what about the violas? Maybe the violas we can fa we can use the notes, um, the other notes we didn't put. So fa mi. Uh, I use these here. Diminuendo mezzo forte. And for this here, what do we have? We have E, D. We can use E, D. Uh, or E, F. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Uh, we could use both, actually. We could uh, like do a divisi. Because um, I'm kind of uh, starting to want to use actually an octave here. Um, and just uh, keep the keep the original uh, octaves uh, with the cello, and to double this one, uh, and to double it with the second violin, and have the first violin play play the higher one. Uh, so a lot more, uh, a lot more on the lower octave. And only some color with the first violins on the upper octave. We'll see how that sounds. Maybe I'm maybe I'm, I'm gonna make a different choice here. So back to the viola, maybe fa. We have f. Uh, we have e. Sorry, e c here. Um, I want to have a low c because the low c on the viola is actually the open string. 
it's okay, but uh, if you want something more expressive, don't use an open string because the open string, uh, you can't do uh, some vibrato on it. So maybe like, what's, it, what's that chord anyway? Um, it's F, so maybe A here. Something like this, but we already have A here. Maybe we can just do the DVZ here. So actually now don't really need the the low uh, the low staff from the viola and just hide it. And then for the end C F E we had already C F E somewhere. Uh, I think it was the with the horns. C F E. I can double it with uh, with this. Okay, uh, we end up doing it here and then then use. Okay, this is starting to look good. And now maybe our violins are okay with this. Um, just using the melody here. Um, we don't have all the notes from um, from these scores, I think, with the the violins, but uh, we can supplement supplement it with uh, other instruments. So now I want to do. Uh, it's weird because I, I'm not touching the, I haven't touched the um, woodwinds yet, but I'm just going to do them at the end. Um, I want to do, I want to add in trombones. This part is, is like, it's so strong emotionally. You, you kind of want to have trombones to like give some, give some meat. So yeah, but um, maybe I wouldn't put them all the way. Maybe I could like just leave the the horns here and now here bring in the trombones. That would be good, no? Like on Discord, like a big trombone uh, trombone group would be nice. So like the trombone tree can do the same thing as the, the tuba. Uh, like they put a red note here, but it's actually fine. Um, and then for this one is here. What's the notes here? C, C, do, re, do, re. I would do something like this, yeah. And for the end, uh, I would use C. Maybe for this uh, this first chord, I would put in uh, put in a G with uh, diminuendo and here like it uh, what's the the chord here yeah c minor i would use uh, a fifth here just with a diminuendo diminuendo to piano something like this and uh, so we create uh, we ac actually orchestrate the diminuendo of the ending um, so they don't play here. We just have the two bird playing alone at the end here. And that's it for the trombones. The brasses, you, you sometimes you just need them for a specific moment to create just an emphasis on a chord or on a specific moment. Uh, usually like the louder parts of, uh, of, the, of the music. And I would do the same for the for the trumpets. Actually, bring in the trumpets for um, maybe just this one chord um, on the melody. Except it's a little bit low from the for the trumpet, so I could I could bring it uh, for I could uh, use it to highlight the, the the first violin just here. So let's try this then. Okay, like this um, legato. Um, what about the second and third trumpet? I don't want to have two trumpets on this because I I don't want to, the IE to stand out too much. Uh, again, it's a doubling, and I I want the upper octave to not sound so so intense. So uh, what do I do here? Uh, I could use like F 
I could use like F E something like this. Um, maybe just with the second trumpet because I have all three of them. I could maybe bring something else. Mila. Maybe a C. And uh, again, another C. Something like this. And I would use the trumpet on the beginning or on the end ending. Uh, the trumpets are just so obnoxious. Not, not obnoxious, but they can be really present in uh, and add in uh, maybe too much intensity. And I'm more looking for warmth than from clarity. And trumpets have this kind of clarity to, to, to their timbre, which I'm luck not looking for. So we have our strings, we have the brasses, and we have nothing in the woodwinds. So we're gonna do the woodwinds. Um, and now it's actually a good time to uh, for the woodwinds to think about the, the fifth step I have in my uh, piano to orchestra video, which is to expand or adapt the musical ideas. Um, so we have basically something very simple here, just a melody and some long notes here. So we kind of have, can think of how we can expand this uh, to, to the orchestra. And uh, I kind of feel like the woodwinds would be good to uh, bring some life to these chords and to these notes. Uh, maybe like I'm thinking of a pulsing, maybe they can highlight uh, the chords in the, the, the higher registers and just pulse them or just create do some arpeggios uh, going up and down to create some color and to create some um, some kind of energy to, that would make the, the, the music move a little bit more. Um, so let's try this. Let's have fun. And maybe it's not going to fit the, the, um, the idea of the movie, of the, or the idea of the scene. But um, again, we can always tone it down afterwards. So for the, f uh, I'm I'm not gonna start with the piccolo. I'm mostly gonna start with the flute here. I think. Um, so it's a B flat, uh, B flat chord. So maybe, so maybe like uh, doing kind of a arpeggio, going off. And what's the melody here? Yeah, we can like double the melody. It's kind of I for this, but maybe we can keep this going. Something like and we have the, the D here, right? Yeah and make the triplet slow down and and like this this could be good we say a do because we want the two flutes to play this um, and then create the articulations diminuendo the piano and what do we do with the piccolo? Maybe just double, um, just double this. It's a little bit low here, so I would just maybe uh, um, have it come in here. And mid to forte, mid to forte. Um, now let's think. The oboe can do the same. Um, but maybe we can have it do some um, some different intervals, um, like we have. Uh, it's a little bit high for the oboe, so maybe like the sixth. B here. No, the clarinet would be good. Actually, I'm gonna go just go straight to the clarinet. Clarinet would be good, just an octave lower like this. I would, I wouldn't 
touch it. It just it just fits great. Um, so maybe just here. I think it's still a bit high for my oboe here. Maybe like something like this. Because actually, yeah, this actually works better because I want to end on the on the a doubling of the melody. I don't want to add in too much um, too much harmony, uh, different harmony. Uh, but when this uh, this arpeggio goes up and down, it's fine. But when these are like these moments where it's really focused on uh, the melodic line, I really want to follow it. And maybe here. You can like go back to do this, these, um, and yeah. Instead of doing the triplets here, I'm just gonna hold that note, something like this. You know, the oboe is always the one sticking out, so I don't want. Uh, if you want to do a diminuendo, like take the oboe off first, um, and just like here, have these do uh, the movement. Now the English horn, um, maybe I won't go too crazy with the whole woodwind section. Maybe I can uh, keep some some color and energy for the second phrase. Um, but I can give, uh, I can bring the bass clarinet maybe uh, just for this um, for this same note here. Yeah, just for the bass line here. And uh, I can double this part uh, with the two bassoons. Um, and since we've gone down to the fifth here, maybe here I can go up to uh, to get the, the E that we, that we took off from here earlier. And this could be good. And I don't want to use the contrabassoon. Contrabassoon are like the worst. They're super loud and and they're they don't they don't play very like their pitch is usually bad um, because it's such an, a weird instrument. So yeah, don't use it for the for the for the softer movement. Now we're getting to something and uh, let's do the big uh, the big moment here. The big I like the second chord. And since I was talking about the contrabassoon, then I can add in the contrabassoon here. Um, contrabassoon, I might mean, just add it, add it for for this uh, element here. And it's the same as the double basses; they sound an octave lower than written. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna put the contrabassoon on this this chord, not on the last three ones. Uh, for this here, um, but, uh, what's the notes? Um, I can use something like this. Um, da, 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 F. We can also um, do like we did on the um, on the horns. Actually, I think I like this better um, because it's gonna be really dense down like down here. So I kind of want to move as much instrument uh, in the upper register as possible. Like the the most instruments you have on the lower notes, uh, the darker is going to be, and the, the the more muddy the sound's going to be. I don't want too too much muddiness. Uh, I just want like some power and some warmth. Um, so yeah, that's why I moved the bassoons here up here. Um, and the bassoons, they can kind of do the same thing here. Um, yeah, just same as the, the horns. And what about the bass clarinet here? Uh, can I just like copy the trombone? Copy the trombone here and for the, and use the last notes from the double bass. And then we just need our last couple of groups here. So, so this, uh, so on this uh, forte, I want to use this uh, kind of pulsing chord that I was talking about, pa 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 pa, something like uh, in triplet like this. Um, that kind of that kind of uh, make us feel like the um, the chord is breathing. 
it's so intense, it's so colorful, it's like breathing. So I'll start with uh, the flutes again. Um, so let's say I'm we have F, uh, so I want maybe like something like this. Like maybe these two chords, because and we have to think that uh, we have these, uh, we have these as well. So oh, maybe not that 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 would not be good. Something like this maybe. So let's see. I'm I'm gonna do this. Uh, so A obviously up here. And let's just uh, put the rhythm like da 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 da. Maybe like da 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 da. I feel like I have a feeling in, in triplet. Um, it's like da ba 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 bam bam ba bam. And uh, for these, I like to use um, uh, tenuto with legato. It's a specific uh, attack. It's like you keep breathing the wind out into the instrument, but you just make it stop. Da, 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 da. You kind of re-accentuate uh, the notes without stopping the, the gesture of, of breathing out. And uh, maybe here, like uh, just again, simple triplet. Um, okay, so what am I going to do here? So for this one, I thought this would be okay, like maybe F and E. Like this. Um, and then what could we do with our um, oboe? Then what could we do with our English horn? Uh, well, think about the English horn later. Um, what about the clarinet? Maybe C and C and A, maybe. Yes. Clarinet uh, C and A. I'm just filling the chords that I that I created here. And then I'm gonna take this out because I don't want my piano score to be all messed up. Okay. Okay, and now the English horn, uh, and we're gonna do the we we could do the piccolo already. Uh, piccolo, I could see like just a third above, like the C. Da, 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 da. Something like this. And the English horns, uh, let's do, we could do the F. Like just doubling this, this line here, uh, an active lower, actually doubling the oboe. Like this. Yes. And now into the final chord. Now I want to uh, bring things out. So piccolo would go out, English horn would go out, oboe will go out, and uh, we could just leave the flutes and the clarinets. This is actually the, a, a good way to decrescendo a woodwind ensemble. The, wood, the um, flutes and the clarinet are the most subtle instruments of the, the woodwinds, or the most flexible instruments. Um, and for this ending, maybe we could do something that's moving a little bit more, like ta ti ta ti ta ti ta, like a combination of like the the the, the first movement in the phrase ti da ti da 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 da, and the second movement here, which is more uh, repeated notes, like uh, we have. So we have kind of the same idea from from the second part here ta 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 ta. 
but uh, it's moving. Ta da di da di da di da. And the fact that it could be moving at a different speed um, and a varying speed kind of add into this feeling of um, uncertainty. And I'm not sure I talked about this, but uh, there is in the there is kind of a, a blurring of the sense of pulse in this uh, melody. Uh, we have the triplet here, in like the melody. We're not sure where where, where we where we where we land and the second chord here lands on the second beat so it's kind of confusing afterwards when when we start to go into more square like one chord per measure um it's kind of confusing to 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 think about the the beginning here like it's so much emotions that like the the, the, the sense of time is confused so I kind of liked it, uh, like this idea, and we can even like um, we can even um, bring this idea onto the the ending part here. Um, so what could we do? So in so we're in G uh, G minor. So maybe like uh, uh, and here we could we could start dividing. Like it's not uh, it's not uh, a due anymore. It could be divided. Something like this. Da -di -da -di -da -di. And I kind of uh, kind of like this idea. Maybe not just like two notes are telling thing, but ba -bi -ba -bi -da -di -da. Uh, like an like a broken uh, arpeggio, yeah. And uh, da -di -da -bi -da -di. Uh, starting with the uh, with the eight notes into a quarter note into a triplet. this uh, and then this is a uh, this is D D minor we could do another triplet here and then like something like this. And simply take this, put this in the clarinets, an active lower. We could send the, the lower note into the into the the other uh, inversion. So we we have a little bit more uh, harmonization going on. And we can end on the octave chord here. So there you go. It's pretty straightforward now. Um, oops, we didn't do the percussions. Okay, so for the percussions, um, like let, let's do the timpani first. We can just highlight uh, like the the different uh, the different chords here. Uh, maybe the second chord here is D, and then uh, this is the F. Mm. And then I, we can do like a kind of a rumble before. Um, Oops. Uh, what's it? Something like this. Uh, let's do the same thing here. Actually. Or maybe not too. Maybe just like another pum pum pum. Um. Oops. Like this. Okay, um, and then at the end here again, and so forth. I could see like some hits in the end here to uh, 
to like uh, punctuate the ending in a diminuendo, of course. Dun, 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 dun. Something like that. Okay. Um, that's it. I think here a uh, suspended symbol. Just to start uh, start us off. This is let vibrate. Okay, and same thing at the end uh, here. Something like that. Yeah, that's for percussion one. Percussion two. Um, I'm thinking of like blockage build. Um, just so we can, as a kind of sort of stingling in the upper register alongside this uh, this magical movement in the the woodwinds it would create yeah and we 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 have a harp so this is gonna this is gonna sound good together clock uh, oops clock and spiel yeah I, can, I could actually highlight uh, highlight the, these uh, these high notes. The glockenspiel sounds two octaves higher than written, so be careful with that. So if I want to have this IF, then it's here. I might not um, use all these notes. I can hint uh, the rhythm that's gonna come afterwards. Just a glockenspiel doing this could be good. Um, it's a forte. Then here I'm gonna try and hit hit it loud. Although the glockenspiel can be, although the glockenspiel you can hit it so loud. I'll try and maybe add in some. Some little things here. Like I created kind of a um, little something here with a timpani at the end of the phrase. I create kind of a resonance. Dun, 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 boom. It's only the timpani doing it. And I kind of want to do it here with the glockenspiel. And uh, maybe finish this here. To, to go with the, the flute here. And a C at the end. I'm just gonna write mezzo forte because I don't want it to go too too low actually. I could just leave it like this. And finally let's do let's add in a bass drum because we have three percussions, so we need a bass drum. Uh, oh, close guys, French. And uh, just here and at the end, maybe. Close guys. And uh, maybe just so we have a little bit more tingling, we like, I don't want to use the, the big bass drum all the time. Maybe could you use it here? Um, and another bass drum here, like three three hits, could be could be okay. And this would be of course like a small hit, like piano. Um, like bass drums can sound like huge, but um, if you put it like if you play it softly, it just creates such a nice resonance, and it's great for like ending a phrase. And I'd like to have uh, an extra dose of T. 
tingling uh, to help my glockenspiel. So maybe this percussionist, I can pay him or her a little bit more and uh, he or she can play the triangle for just a couple notes. Um, like uh, play a little bit with the triplets up here. Maybe like something like that. Ding, 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 ding. To uh, to answer or, or to predict a little bit what's going what the timpani is gonna do here. It could be cool. And then um, again the triangle afterwards here. Oops. Something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Now enough with the percussions. I think we we got plenty. Um, yeah. This is kind of kind of a big orchestra. I kind of showing off a little bit uh, the orchestra, the the power of the orchestra. So after like think seeing this, this is not maybe the thing I would do for this moment for this scene. Um, it might be a little bit too much. Um, so we'll see afterwards. I might. I might do like um, an orchestration of what I would really do. I'll just tone down actually what what we have here um, and explain how. With the harp, uh, we could do like a, a like a big glissando, the beginning uh, that would go well with the with the symbol suspended symbol. We'll do ring. Um, we could do like. Um, can do two octaves uh, like this. Mm, this. Yep. Oops. Like this uh, um, forte, and we can have like some chords here. Again, chords here. Maybe something like that. I'll leave it forte because the harp doesn't sound very loud anyway. I could do uh, again a little triplet here. To predict what we have in the ending here. Da, da, da. Oh no, actually it's doubling it's doubling this line here. You can actually have a little triplet to double this upper line here. Um, actually I'm just gonna copy paste. Like that. Okay. And now um, the the low chord here. Actually the harp uh, sounds a lot louder in the lower register than in the upper register. The small strings, we can barely hear them. Um, I'm gonna do my little arpeggios here, maybe already. What's the chord here? Re. Yeah, D minor. All right, I did this because I seen a E here. So la. Something like that. And I can uh, do. This um, and I want to double this with the harp. So do the bass 
add in some octaves. There you go. So give me a moment to put this into MIDI. So give me a moment to assign the good instruments here and uh, we'll hear how that sounds. Well, now this sounds pretty crazy uh, compared to the original piano piece. Um, and actually, like, I think that uh, we we gone a little bit too far from the original idea of the piece. Um, if I can remind you, it was like two people reuniting um, and like being happy to be toge together after a long, like, dramatic series of events so it's not so dramatic now it's just like it's just like more majestic because it's such a big orchestra and um but there's other things that the orchestra can do so actually i would i would actually score this for um a smaller orchestra first uh like maybe like as big as um like a a string orchestra that's as big as this. So actually I could keep all of the of the, the string orchestra. If I we would do it less intense, I would bring all of these an active down. Um, but the rest I could keep it that way. Um, I'm not sure about the harp as well because it gives uh, something like magical to the to the to the sound and I'm not looking for this. So I'm taking down the harp. Um, for the percussions, we could like I could just use the cymbal, like the glockenspiels and the triangle, and the uh, also add in something too too much like magical and uh, like these eye pitch, these eye tinglings. We don't necessarily need this in the um, in the scene I was describing, um, and the 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 bass drum either. So I would like take off the bass drums as well, hide it, uh, but the suspended symbol, I like it because it, it gives just, just the right amount of swish that you need to, um, you know, to, to it's, kind, it's kind of a, a breath of fresh air or something like this. Um, and you don't really need more. And I think, um, I think this this is often something we tend to do to do too much too much percussion too much color and that's what's weird like when when we're trying to to depict like some very complex emotions we kind of do a lot of things to make make it make the music more complex but actually um sometimes less is more and um yeah, I think the, the the music speaks for itself. Like the harmony, the melody uh, was really specifically written for that, and um, and the, now the orchestra just needs to support this and present it in its most pure form of expression. Um, so maybe like in this case, less is more, especially for all the colors that uh, all the color instruments like the percussions, the winds. Um, really need to be careful for that. Yeah, the timpanis I like because they just add a little bit a little bit of movement. Maybe I wouldn't do all of these. Like I could just do just highlight um maybe the first note here, uh, the changing of note here, the F here. Um we could do we could do a little bit a little uh, rumbling at the end. Um like something like this. Yeah, and if we go up, what do we think of the rest of this wood sections? Like, again, uh, if I was employed to write the music for a movie, for for this kind of uh, this movie, um, I would not use all of these. Definitely not. 
I would actually bring in a smaller orchestra. I would take all these, delete, goodbye. These were uh, the trumpets, the trombones, and the tuba. We don't need these for for this um, for this uh, for this scene for this idea. Um, definitely not the contrabassoon. Um, we could need we could use all of these, um, but maybe not so much. Like um, like I, I I pulled back the 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 octave from the melody here. Uh, I put it down again. So no piccolo, no flute because the the flute can't really play in this register and can't really do anything. Um, so why do we need the flute? We don't need the flute. So take, let's take it off. The oboe's gonna if the flute's not there, the oboe's gonna like steal the show and everybody's gonna hate it. The English horn is. The English horn could be good with this melody, uh, but I feel weird to just put one English horn doubling the violins. Um, it would be a waste, maybe, I think. Um, but, uh, and now we're onto the lower woodwinds, which we could use. But now, uh, with uh, with all the other woodwinds gone, this effect of da 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 do much now um, so I would maybe just double um, double the melody with my clarinets simply like this um, yeah just like and I would do, kind of do the same for uh, obviously we don't have like not necessarily obviously but I wouldn't put a bass clarinet in there if like there's so few widths with uh, woodwinds um, and here I would use only the bass something like this with the A up here Oops. and uh, maybe we could leave it until the end but uh, if you really want to orchestrate the dynamics here then you're only using these clarinets and bassoons for the second phrase so this is what i would do for um if i would i would have been commissioned a music for this for this scene now it's very different and it's very lighter than what we what we what we had but uh, give me some time now to put the notes in uh, uh, put, put the instruments in and let's have a listen first and we'll talk after Now again, let's listen to the piano score. And one last time, the big orchestra. Now, definitely, like, of course, the big orchestra is way cooler and it's good to push it, to push the orchestra to the limit and see 
what it's capable of. But it's not necessarily what something you will do all the time. And I really believe like for for a movie and especially like when you're writing music for the film, the directors don't necessarily want your music to like be too crazy too crazy and to to like overpower the image. Good directors leave you space to do music and to create emotions with the music. Um, but you need to do the same for them. You need to to give to give the space to the image. The image is, is actually there. You, there's nothing you can do about it. About it. And uh, you have to support it and not to overwhelm it. So this is what would have been my process, I guess. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't already, go listen to my other video about orchestration uh, from or piano to orchestration. Five steps explained to you in a very friendly way. So go and check that out. And if you've been looking that video up until now, well, thank you and subscribe for more content about composition and orchestration related topics. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye-bye.